Ooh. Nondescript generic carbon filter. One gram of activated carbon can have a surface area of over 3,000 square meters as determined by gas absorption. Gas, gas absorption. That's the equivalent surface area of 1,500 Dwayne Johnson. Nonsensical units. Made from bio-based materials like coconut husks, activated carbon can protect you from awesome byproducts like delicious formaldehyde. Yummy. Get the power of 1,500 Dwayne Johnsons in your 3D printer today. You, my dear viewer, might be someone who has a 3D printer at home. Maybe you have a few 3D printers at home and it's isolated as it should be. It should not be in your bedroom or in your bed, weirdo. But even if you don't have a questionable relationship with your printer, you might want to make it safer because maybe that area is difficult to ventilate or maybe it's not completely isolated from your house. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you have someone in your family with respiratory concerns. It makes sense to make this safer. Enter filters. These draw the air from the chamber with a fan and filter out particulates and such that in high enough concentrations can be damaging to your health. Lots of printers have filters these days. They're great. Except, are they? This is the X1 Carbon. It is a great printer for printing ABS, ASA, and other high temperature materials. And it has a carbon filter. It is a carbon filter, right? What kind of carbon filter? Uh, X1C carbon filter grade. Hmm. Nothing really. It's just a paper box with carbon granules in it. It has a fan, but honestly, I don't know how effective this is. Unfortunately, that is the case with a lot of printers. Lots of printers have carbon filters. We just don't see any grade or standardization. We're in the dark. We don't know if they're effective. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. The standard grade for a carbon filter is HEPA. Lots of printers have carbon filters that are HEPA-like or HEPA style. There's no standardization or grade. Only a handful of consumer grade 3D printers actually use HEPA filters. Some might seem like a filter to beginners, but they're actually just a little bit of foam that protects the chamber fan from bits of filament getting into it. And then of course there are lots of printers that just don't have carbon filters. Now enclosures will help contain fumes and particles inside a printer, but lots of printers are not completely sealed, especially around the door and the hinges. And if you have a printer that is enclosed, but it doesn't have a fan and filter, you might notice a very, very fine white powder building up inside. And that is something that you really don't want in your lungs. But what is HEPA, you might ask? It's not a brand, it's not a specific design, it's a standardization. A filter can only be considered HEPA if it can filter out 99.975% of particles with a diameter of 0.3 microns. These are the most penetrating of particles. HEPA-13 can help block odors and particles and volatile organic compounds. It doesn't matter what you're printing, whether it's nylon, ABS, or PLA, you're still gonna get fumes. Don't keep your printer in your bedroom. But different filaments can create more fumes and different fumes too. I found an article in the Journal of Atmospheric Environment detailing a risk assessment of 3D printing emissions. They tested a few different kinds of filament and ABS and nylon were the worst offenders. No offense to Lulzbot, these were just what was tested. Caprolactam and styrene were the chemicals with highest levels in the fumes. For ABS, it was mostly styrene, obviously, and for nylon, it was caprolactam. Both of these are toxic, styrene being the worst. As for particulates, again, most were from ABS with PLA being the least offensive. So we get it. If you print a lot of ABS or similar materials a lot of the time, it makes sense to get a filter and preferably one that is standardized and is just not a blank box of carbon pellets. Those results were actually from a specific study run in 2016 where five different printers were hooked up to an extraction tube with a fan into a 3.6 meter cube steel chamber. I want to try this again, but in a more updated and more real world setting. So here we are with the X1 and we're going to do two tests. We're going to do one with the printer not running and then another one with the printer printing ABS with the stock carbon filter. And our filament of choice is the most popular shade of ABS, brown. We will then finally round off everything with one last test, but instead of the stock carbon filter, we'll be using this Alveo 3D HEPA 13 filter kit. Alveo 3D supply a bunch of filter kits. This one specifically is designed to be wall mounted to custom enclosures. Alveo 3D also make their own enclosures and other filtration systems, but you can get the individual parts in the 3D Jake shop right now to fit your needs if you have made your own enclosure or 
if you want to have the parts to make your own filter setup for basically any enclosed printer. Alveo also have STLs and step files for these specific parts, like the housing, as well as the controller board, cable, and connection management. They will also soon have a design for a custom DIY enclosure, and if you have an X or P series bamboo printer, they will have the STLs for that soon. But we got the first test draft of their X1 design. We're going to try it out. You can use PETG or ABS for this just as long as it can take a temperature of 60 degrees, so some PLAs might be suitable. Assembly takes around 15 minutes and is very, very easy, except putting in the seals into the recesses of the printed parts. That was a little bit irritating. Uh, but you're not actually changing anything with the printer. There's no permanent modifications. The kit actually just mounts to screw holes that are already at the back of the printer. The filter setup actually directs air back into the chamber via the poop chute, which is great because your chamber temperature will remain constant for ABS printing. You can use this with the AMS for printing PLA. Just open the little door here and the poop will have space to fall out. As for printing ABS on the AMS, well, a lot of people don't do that, but for those who want to do that, let's find out. We can keep the door open here and turn up the heated bed to 100 degrees and turn on the fans for the filter. Let's see where the chamber temperature maxes out. Oh well, that's, that's all right. It's better than room temperature. Removing the filter is incredibly easy. You're just pulling it out basically. Okay, let's look at the test results for the first control test. For the control test, I picked a relatively isolated area of the office for this. It is really just an empty office area. The only things that are here are empty chairs and tables and a semi-assembled table tennis table. We are using a CF30 air quality meter and after some calibration, we set it up for six hours. Same time scale for the other tests too. When it comes to 3D printing, there are several metrics to observe when it comes to air quality. The first is total volatile organic compounds. These are things like styrene and caprolactam and lactide that are emitted by the printer. These are basically chemicals that have a very low boiling point and exist almost as vapors. The next is PM 2.5 and 1.0. And these are particulates that range in size from 2.5 micrometers in diameter for PM 2.5. And for PM 1.0, these are one micron in diameter. I was hoping to have a graph for the control test, but control tests were what we expected. Zilch, nada, nichts. There are some guidelines for healthy air quality indoors. It differs by country, but the World Health Organization says that levels over three milligrams per meter cubed are not acceptable for total volatile organic compounds. And for particulates, these are PM 2.5 levels. Anything over 25 micrograms per meter cubed is not suitable. For the actual testing, I am using a model and settings that give a very, very even flow rate. The reason being the amount of fumes will be dependent on how much filament is actually being heated and extruded. I want to keep this as even as possible because if we see any big jumps in the results, we can know that that is an error. We shouldn't actually see any big jumps. It should be just a gradual increase and plateau. These were the results from the stock carbon filter test. As you can see, we got a nice increase all the way through with PM 2.5 levels hitting seven micrograms per meter cubed and averaging out at around 4.3 micrograms per meter cubed and PM 1.0 averaging out at around three micrograms per meter cubed. I am happy to say that the total VOC levels were pretty low throughout the whole test, except at the beginning, averaging out at around 0.03. I guess the X1 filter does do something. This test was started just before everyone left the office, and I wasn't sure why the TVOC was a bit high at the beginning, but it became clear when I did the next test. It should also be noted that these levels dropped to almost zero within minutes of the print job finishing. This is to be expected in a large open space where the fumes can dissipate, but probably not if you keep your printer in a little closet. Now it is time for the Alveo 3D test, and here is what we got. There is a marked decrease in PM 2.5 levels. The average was 1.7 micrograms per meter cubed. And for PM 1.0, this was also considerably lowered to an average of 0.9 micrograms per meter cubed. As for the total volatile organic compound levels, well, that was interesting. So remember, when we were doing the stock carbon filter test for the X1, uh, we had a bit of a increase in total volatile organic compound levels at the beginning of the test. I wasn't sure why that happened, 
But that test was done when people were leaving the office. So people were pretty much gone by that stage. Uh, the second test with the Alveo 3D filter, uh, that was done a little bit earlier. There were still people in the office and working. But as soon as the lights got turned off and everyone was gone, those VOC levels plummeted to zero. So I'm guessing that was all from people being around the office, working, having computers on, having printers on, and not actually from the printer itself. So that was an interesting test. The HEPA filter definitely does beat the stock carbon filter on the X1. And it's really awesome that Alveo 3D have the specific components that you can mix and match and set up for your ultimate filter kit for your printer. Also, I am very glad after doing these tests that carbon filters do exist. What do you guys think? Is this something that you absolutely need for your home printer or workshop space? My two cents, if you have a printer at home, yeah, you need a carbon filter. I think this is a, a great idea. The only time where I think you don't need a carbon filter is if your printer is completely isolated from your living environment. So in a garage or a shed or an interdimensional portal. But let us know what you guys think. Have you had good results with other filters? And have you tested them? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, you're very welcome to join our Discord server where there is talk about 3D printers on a daily basis. The link is down below in the description. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.